The following program is a supplement to the operator manual, which came with your mixer. If you have any question concerning your mixer, please refer to your manual. The Legacy 80-quart mixer is a heavy-duty mixer, which features a 3-horsepower motor, digital smart timer, and power ball lift as standard equipment. The Legacy 140-quart mixer is a heavy-duty mixer, which features a 5-horsepower motor, digital smart timer, and power bowl lift as standard equipment. Both models have four mix speeds and a stir speed. A variety of agitators, bowls, and accessories are available. These are described in a separate use and applications handbook, which is furnished on the Legacy Mixer Operator Training CD provided with each mixer. This training consists of segments on operation, cleaning, and maintenance. Warning. Moving agitator and bowl. Keep hands, clothing, and utensils out while in operation. Do not use without interlock guard. The Legacy Mixer is equipped with smart timer controls and a power bowl lift. Other operating parts and their functions will be described throughout this section. The wire cage must be in position or the mixer will not operate. The bowl must stay in the lock position on the bowl support or the mixer will not operate. If the bowl support is not all the way up in the mixed position, the mixer will not operate unless the start button is pressed and held. The mixer will then operate only in stir speed. Let's take a look at the standard controls. This button starts the mixer. This button stops the mixer. This is the speed selector. The mix speed selected is displayed here. This is the time selector. The mixing time is displayed here. The bowl switch raises and lowers the mixing bowl. The mixer has four speeds as well as a stir setting. Stir is used for incorporating ingredients at the start of each mixing process. Speed one, low, is for heavy mixtures such as pizza dough, heavy batters, and potatoes. Speed 2, medium low, is for mixing cake batters, mashing potatoes, and developing bread dough. Speed 3, medium high, is for incorporating air into light batches as well as finishing whipped items. And speed 4, high, is for maximum and accelerated air incorporation into light batches. For mixers equipped with the optional programmable recipe timer, there are nine programmable recipes. Each recipe can have up to six steps with a maximum of 30 minutes allowed for each step. For more information, refer to your operator manual. Note, the bowl must be installed onto the bowl support before the agitator is installed. To install the bowl, first fully lower the bowl support. Position the bowl so that the alignment pins on the left side of the bowl support fit in the bowl. Now swing the bowl into the locked position on the bowl support. To install an agitator, the bowl must be on the bowl support and fully lowered. Open the wire cage. Place the agitator inside the bowl and line up the horizontal slot on the agitator with the agitator shaft pins. Slide the agitator up the agitator shaft until it stops and latches. To remove the agitator, open the wire cage and lower the bowl by pressing and holding the down arrow on the bowl switch. Hold the agitator and pull the plunger of the agitator out and slide the agitator down off the agitator shaft. To remove the bowl after mixing, lower the bowl by pressing and holding the down arrow on the bowl switch. Unlock the bowl and swing it out slightly from the locked position. Open the wire cage and remove the agitator as just shown. To raise the bowl, the bowl must be in the locked position. Push and hold the up arrow on the bowl switch. To lower the bowl, push and hold the down arrow on the bowl switch. Caution, before lowering the bowl onto a bowl truck, always unlock the bowl and swing the bowl out slightly. 
to raise the bowl while the agitator is mixing the product when required by recipe or when you're using the bowl scraper attachment, close the wire cage. Then select the mixing speed on the speed dial. Select a countdown time or hold for continuous count up mixing. While pressing and holding the up arrow on the bowl switch, press and hold the start button. Remember, the mixer only runs in stir speed while the bowl is rising. When the bowl reaches the mix position, release the start button. The mixer will automatically change to the selected mixing speed. Note, Mixing speed and time can be adjusted at any time during the mixing operations without stopping the mixer. To prepare for mixing, first open the wire cage. Place the mixing bowl on the bowl support. Pour the ingredients into the bowl and swing the bowl back into the lock position. Place the agitator inside the bowl and then attach it to the agitator shaft. Return the wire cage to the front center position. Push and hold the up arrow on the bowl switch until the bowl reaches the mix position and stops. The mixer is now ready for mixing. Let's take a close look at timer operation. Using the count up mode, continuous mixing, begin by turning the speed dial to select the mix speed. The speed setting can be changed at any time during the mixing operation. Note, stir is to be used for incorporating ingredients. Do not use stir to develop dough products. Set the timer on hold by turning the time selector counterclockwise until hold appears in the time window. Press the start button to begin mixing. The timer starts counting forward from zero. Note, if the wire cage is opened at any time, the mixing operation will stop. To resume the mixing operation, close the wire cage and press the start button. Use the stop button to stop the mixer. The mixing time is displayed in the time window. Press the start button to resume the mixing if needed. Note, when the timer reaches 50 minutes, it will roll over to 0001 and continue counting until the stop button is pressed. If you are using the countdown mode or timed mixing, begin by turning the speed dial to select a mix speed. If the count-up mode was used for the previous batch, the desired time needs to be entered. If the countdown mode was used for the previous batch, the previous time will be displayed. If a different time is needed, turn the time selector to the desired time. Now, press the start button to begin mixing. The timer starts counting down from the set time. To stop the mixer at any time, press the stop button. To resume mixing, Press the start button. For example, let's say the mixer is started at speed 1 for 30 seconds and is stopped after 10 seconds. Pressing the start button will resume the mixing operation. If the mixer is stopped and a new time setting is entered, pressing the start button saves the new time setting on the current speed selection. For example, the mixer is started at speed 1 for 30 seconds and is stopped after 10 seconds. Turning the time selector enters a new time. The new time will replace the initial 30 seconds for speed 1 after the start button is pressed. If you do change the time while mixing, the mixer will operate until the new time expires. The adjustment to the time will not be stored. If the speed is changed while mixing, the time will change to the previous time for the selected speed and countdown. Note, if the wire cage is opened at any time, the mixing operation will stop. To resume mixing operation, close the wire cage and press the start button. When the timer reaches zero, the mixer stops and the beep sounds for three seconds. The countdown timer displays the last entered time. Remember, stir is to be used for incorporating ingredients. Do not use it to develop dough products. If the mixer is stopped during the mixing operation, the timer also stops. The timer starts again where it left off when the start button is pressed. The speed window will display the current speed selection. And finally, turn the time selector clockwise to take the mixer out of the hold mode. After the mixer is stopped, unlock the bowl and swing it out slightly. 
Press and hold the down arrow on the bowl switch to lower the bowl. Open the wire cage assembly. Remove the agitator from the agitator shaft and remove the bowl from the bowl support. Let's take a closer look at the wire cage. The wire cage can be rotated out of the way to add ingredients or to access the bowl and agitator. Note how the grooves on the nylon retainer shoes allow the wire cage to ride around the circular ridge of the planetary drip cup. To open the wire cage, rotate it to your left. To close the wire cage, rotate it to your right until it stops in the front center closed position. Note, the wire cage must be returned to the closed position for the mixer to operate. To remove and clean the wire cage, first lower the bowl and remove the agitator. While holding the wire cage securely with both hands, rotate it to your left until the front center retainer shoe reaches the gap in the circular ridge of the planetary drip cup. Lower the front of the wire cage and move the wire cage slightly to the rear so the rear retainer shoes clear the ridge of the drip cup. The wire cage can now be removed. Wash the wire cage in a sink, rinse with clear water, and dry with a clean cloth. The stainless steel splash guard can be wiped off and or washed with a cloth or sponge using warm soapy water. Rinse with clear water and dry with a clean cloth. To reinstall the wire cage, position the ring of the wire cage so the front center retainer shoe is positioned below the gap in the circular ridge of the planetary drip cup. Position the grooves so the rear retainer shoes straddle the circular ridge on the planetary drip cup. Lift the front of the wire cage so the front center retainer shoe passes up through the gap in the circular ridge on the planetary drip cup. Rotate the wire cage to your right until all three retainer shoes straddle the ridge on the drip cup. Continue rotating the wire cage so the opening is to the front of the mixer to install the agitators or until it stops at the front center position. Warning, disconnect the electrical power to the machine and follow lockout tagout procedures. New mixer bowls and accessories such as beaters, whips, and dough arms should be thoroughly washed with hot water and a mild soap solution, rinsed with a mild soda or vinegar solution, and thoroughly rinsed with clear water before being used. This cleaning procedure should also be followed for bowls and agitators before whipping egg whites or whole eggs. The mixer should be thoroughly cleaned daily. Do not use a hose to clean the mixer. It should be washed with a clean, damp cloth. The base allows ample room for cleaning under the mixer. The apron may be removed for cleaning by loosening the thumb screws. The drip cup splash guard assembly should be removed periodically and wiped clean. Warning, disconnect the electrical power to the machine and follow lockout tagout procedures. The slideway should be lubricated approximately twice a year. To reach these areas, fully lower the bowl support and remove the apron, which is secured by thumb screws. Wipe a thin coat of Lubriplate 630AA on the bowl pad area of the bowl supports and on each slideway. Install the apron. Occasionally, the planetary seal may become dry and begin to squeak. To correct this, work a little mineral oil under the lip of the seal. To check the oil level, remove the top cover, which is secured by two screws. Remove the transmission fill plug and check the oil level. If the oil level is below the line on the dipstick, add a small amount of the recommended transmission oil until it returns to the proper level. Do not overfill the transmission as leakage may result. Contact your local Hobart service office for the recommended transmission oil. The agitator clearance should be checked periodically. The agitator must not touch the bowl, and the maximum clearance between the bottom of the bowl and the B-flat beater is 1 8 inch or 3 millimeters. The maximum clearance between the bottom of the bowl and the ED dough arm is 5 16 inch or 8 millimeters for the HL800 and 11 16 inch 
or 17 millimeters for the HL1400. Install a bowl and beater. Note, if the bowl and beater come into contact before the bowl support reaches its stop, adjust the stop screw. Pour enough flour in the bowl to cover where the beater travels. With the bowl fully raised, remember the beater should not touch the bowl, briefly run the mixer at the lowest speed. Turn off the mixer, disconnect the power supply, and measure the depth of flour where the beater has traced a path. This measurement should be taken at several points around the bowl to assure accuracy. To adjust the bowl agitator clearance, remove the apron, which is secured by thumb screws. Adjust the stop screw on the left side. Loosen the bottom locking nut and turn the stop screw counterclockwise to increase the clearance or clockwise to decrease the clearance. Tighten the locking nut while holding the stop screw. After the adjustments are made, replace the apron and secure it with the thumb screws. Reconnect the electrical power supply and carefully operate the bowl lift several times to check the adjustment. With proper use and care, the Hobart HL800 and HL1400 mixers will give you years of dependable service. This concludes operator training for the Hobart HL800 and HL1400. For more information, Please consult your manuals.